Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today as we have kicked off the international break. England with a fantastic performance against Malta. Um, clearly, we're going to get through this international break uh, observing a lot of fun. Um, no, no, no. Re realistically, no, we're not. The only good thing about England yesterday was actually seeing Cole Palmer. And you know what? Cole Palmer, on and off the pitch right now, just looks like an absolute gem. So um, for that, fantastic. Everything else, I mean, <laughs> it's just... It, don't put your hopes high for England at the next Euros, basically, as long as Southgate is in charge. I think we all know where it's all going, um, although history proves that we do somehow reach a final or a semi-final, but I don't think it's going to be the case this time. Anyway, we'll wait and see what's going to happen. Let us know your thoughts on England and the international break as a whole um, down in the comments, and I can't wait for it to be over. Um, we're going to get cracking with the latest and what has happened away from watching club football and um, all the news and happenings. But before we do, make sure to be hitting the subscribe button to keep up to date with all things Union Talks football. I will give you my thoughts on all the latest as it drops. As well as that, do check out the socials. They are on screen for you right now. My new Instagram. I stress this. If you are still somehow with the old one, you can go on there and check it's been compromised. Get rid of it and report it. Much appreciated. But follow the one in the description as well as Twitter and all others. Thank you very much. Let's get cracking. Now, yesterday we were speaking about relegation and um, possible sanctions and deductions of points and, and, and financial hits and, and all sorts, you know. Now, um, transfer ban is a possibility. Although we're not actually quite sure what, if anything, is even going to happen. But transfer ban is a possibility. Now, talking about a transfer ban, um, when we are looking at what Chelsea are looking to do in terms of the next January window and the summer window, there's one name on everyone's lips, and that is Victor Osimhen. However, that is looking more likely to be in the summer. Now, there is a possibility of another striker that we have entertained on this channel and we know is heavily linked with Chelsea and Arsenal, and that is... Ivan Tony, we've got news on him and um, I've got to be honest for for Chelsea this is probably going to be a little bit of a meh sort of moment for Arsenal it's not looking good bruv <laughs> let's get into it Arsenal and Chelsea have been handed a transfer blow as reports suggest that striker Ivan Tony will sign a new contract with Brentford. That has come from goal. I'm not entirely surprised. Because when you look at Brentford, we gotta look at you gotta look at this from Brentford's perspectives, from Brentford's eyes. When it comes to January and Ivan Tony is allowed to come back and he's gonna be playing again, you gotta look at that Brentford team. There's one problem. In January, there's one problem. And if they were to let him go in January, then, like, like it's been rumoured and like everyone's been linked, then they're going to be shooting themselves in the feet. Why? Mbwemo goes to the AFCON, the Africa Cup of Nations in January. And will maybe spend a while there, depending on how Cameroon do. Wissa will go to AFCON, the Africa Cup of Nations, as well. Because... He's Ivorian, if I'm not mistaken. So he joins up with the Ivory Coast and they're the hosts. So they might go far. If they get rid of Ivan Tony, they ain't got a striker. Actually, no, they got Neil Malpai. <laughs> they got Neil Malpai. Oh, are they going to stick with Neil? Good old Malpai. Ties, mate. Are they going to do that? No. I hope Brighton get relegated. Actually, you know what? I hope so too. But <laughs> Neil Malpai is going to be the only guy, the only attacker. Brentford can't do that. Brentford cannot do that. They just can't. So I'm not surprised that they're looking to obviously try and keep Ivan Tony at the club and offering him a new deal. And it seems like Ivan Tony will sign that new deal, which I got to say from Ivan Tony's perspective, I'm surprised because he gets to choose literally where, where he wants to go to. And Everyone knows that Chelsea are interested. As I've said before, I think Arsenal will be heavily, heavily going in for him. Uh, it's, it's an easy decision for Ivan Tony normally, but if he's going to be signing a new deal, then so be it. Now, the good news 
about this for Chelsea is that it's okay. We're, we've got our eggs in the other basket. We're looking at Victor Osimhen. Arsenal, not so much. Arsenal seemed like this was their guy that they were looking for. And if this doesn't happen, they got to start again and try and look for another striker because... Best believe, I don't think they're going to be going for Victor Hosseman. <laughs> and um, if anything, maybe they go for Nusa. Maybe they go for someone else. Let me know what you think Arsenal will end up doing in this scenario if Ivan Tony does sign for Brentford. But do you reckon it'll be a shock? It'll be a surprise if Brentford decides, if Brent, well, if Ivan Tony decides to sign a new contract with Brentford, do you think it will happen? Or do you still see Ivan Tony leaving? Because look, this is just news that's coming here now. You never know what's going to happen by January. It's November, right? <laughs> We've got time. So do you reckon this is all actually going to go ahead? Or do you think Ivan Tony still leaves in January? I got to be honest, for me, I still have a feeling a deep inkling that he goes to Arsenal. I just, I can't see how that deal doesn't happen. I don't see how Arsenal don't attempt it in January. And as a result, if Arsenal are going to be willing to pay big money because they have to, I wouldn't be surprised if Brentford have to accept that and then use that money to go and buy a new striker. And then therefore they have another striker. Um, Ivan Tony's gone. They have some extra cash and they're covered for, for the AFCON whilst uh, Mbwemo and Wissa are at the Africa Cup of Nations. So I think that's probably the most likely scenario. I still see Ivan Tony going to Arsenal. I would be shocked if it doesn't happen. So let me know your thoughts down below. And um, as for Chelsea, I do think it's all guns blazing for Victor Osimhen. I think they're going to be trying to get a pre-contract, a pre-agreement done in January for the summer. I think the time that it could happen is the summer. And I think we will go all guns blazing for him to come to Chelsea as of the 1st of June 2024. So let's see what's going to happen. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, let's move on to what's going on at Chelsea. Let's get into it. Although the strategy has largely been to buy young and a less, little less proven, Chelsea's recruitment team are exploring a slightly mid-20s, older and established forward. I'd like to think that this is probably Victor Osimhen, right? I mean, he's 24. He'll be turning 25. <laughs> unless we're going for someone else are we going for someone else I'll be honest I think we're well covered I don't feel like we'll probably need anyone else now we've got Cole Palmer who's kicking uh, on another level right now um, and if I'm honest if Sterling can play like how he did against City on a consistent basis we're covered and then if Mudra can get into form, we're covered. Um, Nkunku comes back, we're covered. Um, the midfield, we're, I think we're okay. <laughs> I, I think we're okay. You could argue if you want to try and go for another striker. But listen, if we're going to go for Victor Osimhen in the summer, or if that's going to happen, then we have what we have now. We can even play Nkunku up top to cover if that's going to get us goals. I mean, we're okay for the options, I think. Uh, let's not get carried away. But... I'm interested to see what maybe the plan B might be. Because look, we might not get Osimhen. We can't just pretend like, oh, no, it's done. Like, no. And if that's the case, then yes, I agree with this. I agree with having to look at someone more experienced, a little older. Someone that's going to come in and get the ground running immediately. So that is a good strategy if we can't get Osimhen. So let's wait and see what happens. And like I said, I think Osimhen fits the bracket anyway. So if we don't get Osimhen, this is what I want to ask you guys. Who should Chelsea go for? Let me know. Because again, the only other rumoured name that we've heard is Nusa. But there's really not been much to that anyway. But is there anyone else that you look at and go, we should go for him? Let me know. I'd, I'd be interested to see who the plan B or your plan B for Victor Osimhen would be. Let me know down below. Now... Everton. More from the Daily Mail. Th th this paper don't stop. But, and this is where I have to say, look, guys, it's a Daily Mail. Yeah. But I'm showing you because I get to give my thoughts on it. When I show you these things, it doesn't mean that I agree with them. <laughs> I'm showing you and then I will tell you what I think. So let's get into it. Here's what the Daily Mail had to say about Everton. And let's just say if this happens, Everton are destroyed. Breaking, Everton face a further nine-point deduction if they are plunged into administration if Burnley, Leicester and Leeds are successful with their £300 million compensation claim against the Toffees. i got to be honest here. They're not wrong. On this, they're not wrong. What they've said here is if, which it's clear that these clubs are going to attempt. Everton have been 
given a points deduction. They are appealing. Now, in terms of the advantage that they got by staying up in the Premier League because of what they did in terms of their spending, breaking the rules, these other clubs that got relegated as a consequence are definitely going to try and go and get compensation. And if they do get compensation by the letter of the law, this is what they're entitled to. And it would be a £300 million compensation claim. And on top of that, if that compensation claim were to happen then Everton will face a further nine-point deduction <laughs> um, as a result. If this actually were to happen and they go into administration, this is if it's, it's all on the basis of if this money has to be paid out, Everton find themselves in administration as a result, then they get a nine-point deduction. That's how it works. The Daily Mail are right here. <laughs> They're right. And i got to be honest, look, we were talking about Man City and Chelsea and relegation and all of that. It's a different kettle of fish. It's, it's a similar, it's, it's the punishment coming from the same source, but it's for different things, right? What, Everton's case is Everton's case. It's completely different to Man City and it's completely different to Chelsea. But what people are talking about are the consequences in terms of what they've done. But what Everton are facing is this. As a repercussion, the possible claim from these other clubs against Everton and that's where they find themselves in deep deep trouble so let's see how this is going to go ahead um because look I think Burnley Leicester and Leeds are going to put a case forward how can they not if I was them I would <laughs> everyone every anyone would so this is why I think now and look Everton survived and they broke a rule I don't see what legs they have to stand on so Everton, are, could, Everton could be in trouble here. They could be in trouble. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. This, this, this is going to take a while because they've appealed. And then if this happens, that's going to be a whole process. So this could take a while. But it's not looking good for Everton right now. Let's just, let's just say that. So let me know your thoughts down below in relation to all of that. And like I've said, for Manchester City and for Chelsea, two different things. For Man City, there's 115 charges that are being looked into. It's probably going to take over two years for that to come to a conclusion. So it's not going to happen tomorrow for Man City. For Chelsea, Chelsea haven't even been charged. But there's an investigation going on, which everyone can kind of see is probably going to lead to charges. So again, that's going to take time too. So we'll see when we get to that point in the road. For now, let's just enjoy the football. <laughs> That's it. Let me know your thoughts in terms of Everton down below. Um, this new offside rule. We have a new offside rule, apparently. And <laughs> I got to say, I looked at this first and I laughed. And then I was starting to think about it. And I was like, hmm. Hmm? Well, let's look into it. And then I'll tell you what I think. Here it is. The Wenger offside law being introduced in 2024-25 is a possibility. If the attacker's entire body completely overtakes the last defender, it's offside. But if a small part of the attacker's body is offside, it won't be considered offside anymore. That offside meaning offside currently, right? So in this law that Arsene Wenger has introduced that could come into effect right now, this case where the yellow shirt is the attacker and the white shirt is a defender, this would be onside. But if every single part of the body has passed every single part of the body belonging to the defender, then it's offside. And it's every body part. We're not talking about armpits anymore. We're not talking about hands. We're not talking about shoulders. We're not talking about it. any body part. If they're intertwined, it's onside. If there's a separation, it's offside. Now, what do I think on this? When I first looked at it, I'm going to be honest. When I first looked at it, I was like, Arsene, what are you doing? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what I was that's literally my reaction my reaction was what like are we being serious here and then I started to think about it and I was like okay you know what when I look at the offside at the moment 
and we're having to draw lines and you know flipping get the VAR to start drawing lines and and vertical and horizontal and it goes on the pitch and the vertical has to be below the armpit and it can't be you know it has to be right in the middle and if it's any left or right then it's going to be a controversial decision and I'm just like okay why don't we just take one element of this offside rule that Wenger's trying to introduce and just bring it into the current system? Which is, stop deeming like uh, it has to be a part, a body part that you're allowed to use in the game, which is anything past the armpit inwards, you know, the shoulder. Anything from the shoulder upwards you're allowed to use, but you can't use anything below the shoulder. Anything past the armpit you can't use. So the offside doesn't apply for the body part that starts from here onwards. Do you know what I mean? Why don't we just get rid of that? Why don't we just use the whole body? That's it, right? If there's one part of the body that's keeping the player on, it's he's on. That's it, right? Which is kind of what this does, but in reverse. So the, hot, the player needs to be completely past the opponent in order for him to be offside. If there's one toe that's still on line with the defender, it's onside. You know, so I, th I feel like we'll probably end up with the same sort of problems. But I feel like to come to a decision that the referees can look at and go, it's on or it's off with less controversy. I think this would be better. Yes, slightly. Um, but this is where I ask, why don't we just use the entire body anyway at the moment and just do that? So we keep the offside as it is. Because as a consequence, we got to be real here. What is this offside rule going to do? It's going to change the entire strategy of the offside trap. The offside traps for all teams now that are looking to play the offside trap can no longer just try to get the player completely, you know, you're in line with the defender, you're in line with the attacker, sorry, and then you push high just a little bit so that he's offside. Like, no. Now, the whole defence needs to literally run up the pitch. They need to leave a gap. If they attempt the offside trap and one player is leaving one leg on, <laughs> then the attacker's going to get the advantage and he's still onside. That's the problem that's going to come tactically for any team. The offside trap now needs to be doubled down. So the defenders don't need to just move into move the line forward by a step. They need to sprint <laughs> in order to get the attackers offside. So that's probably going to be mayhem. Defensively, for all the teams, that's going to be mayhem. For anyone that likes to play an offside trap or likes to play with a high line, this is going to be a terrible rule to bring in for them because they're going to hate this. Um, and for anyone that likes to park the bus, they're probably not going to be bothered. Um, what I would like to say is that if this rule comes in, I think Chelsea need to go and re sign Timo Werner and Alvaro Morata with urgent and immediate effect please because those guys were getting offsides for fun and they were scoring goals from offsides every single week if this rule comes in they're no longer offside we'll end up with literally I don't know 100 goals a season <laughs> so <laughs> what do you think of this rule what do you think of Arsene Wenger's idea I again I'm, I'm in two minds I genuinely don't know what to think on this I, there's one part of me saying this is ridiculous and there's one other part of me that's saying no you know what this is going to make referees un come to a decision easier and quicker so I don't know what do you think what do you think? Let me know down below. Much appreciated. And um, before we wrap up, one last bit of news coming from Marseille. Mehdi Benatia has reached an agreement with Marseille to become the new sporting director. Ex-Morocco international and ex-Marseille player. If I'm not mistaken, Benatia did play for Marseille. I'm pretty sure. Um, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. But... You know what? For the culture of Marseille, this is a very good decision. This is a very good... Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to look it up right now. I'm, I'm, I have to. I have to. Benatia. Um, he... Him being born in France, right? And on top of that... No, he hasn't. He didn't play for Marseille. Ah, no, he grew up at Marseille. He grew up at Marseille, but he never played... Oh, no, he did. Well he, well, he didn't. Technically, he didn't. He got zero apps. He was their player for three years and didn't play at all. So, anyway, um, <laughs> there's that. But he's had a very illustrious career. We, we've known in terms of how impactful he's been in Germany um, and in terms of his time in Italy. But, yeah, he hasn't played for Marseille. But him coming in as a sporting director um, is, I think, like I said, for the culture and for what he's... Um, 
what he's going to do for a club like Marseille, Marseille have a very, very, very big North African contingent. So they look at someone like Mehdi Benatia coming in and they'll immediately relate. Immediately go, yep, not a problem. Um, and look, in terms of a sporting director, as long as he brings good footballing decisions, that's all he needs to do. So let's wait and see how he's going to do in the job. Let me know if you think it's a good decision or a bad decision to bring in... Um, Benatia as the new Marseille sporting director and let's see how he gets on good luck to Marseille and good luck to him let me know your thoughts down below much appreciated and I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one so make sure you're here for that in order to be here for that you have to make sure you're hitting the subscribe button hit the notification bell to be notified once I have uploaded on top of that smash like button if you have enjoyed this enjoy the international break let me know how your countries are doing if you, if they are playing much appreciated and um, we will get through this together and then next thing you know bish bash bosh it will be time for Newcastle versus Chelsea so I'm looking forward to that anyway let me know how all of you are in the comments thank you all so much and I will see you tomorrow for a brand new one have a good one people in a bit take care see you tomorrow and peace